Alright, we've taken down all of Doppler's hired help, and now it's time to fight all the Mavericks. You know what time it is, it's Maverick time. Can't fight the man himself until we take care of the boss refights. So, Zero will be taking care of this one this time around. And we've also got an interesting setup for the boss refights. We'll see why in a moment. But first, we'll fight... Blast Hornet! And hey, it's the return of trivia, because I don't think I did that during X1 or 2. Alright, so Blast Hornet is actually a Reploid who was under the command of Zero. And in fact, Zero was too busy to come to Doppeltown, so Blast Hornet wound up going in his stead, so... Whoops. Zero might have made it out of this situation okay, but Blast Hornet sure didn't. <laughs> he went Maverick, so... Oh dear. Now, now we gotta kill him. Surely this is an incredibly tragic fight, where we just kind of... Gravity bomb a large wasp to death. Just kill him with the powers of gravity, but like, we'll do so while tears stream down our face. It's a very manly way to show your emotions, you see. It's very manly, that ultimate femboy zero. Alright, so the reason I say this is an interesting boss room is because we have this weird thing in the middle here. So instead of just getting uh, an HP recovery, at the end of each fight, you're allowed to whack that cylinder for a bit, and it gives you random items. Anyway, here's Volt Catfish. Uh, he was basically just a battery uh, for Doppeltown. He, he provided power with his just big old built-in generator. Uh, but then he went Maverick, so he just did the reverse of that. <laughs> Instead of providing power, he just stole it. And we saw the copious amounts of energy he stole, with his fight, and the fact that during his, uh, annoying phase, he just turned invincible and shot lightning. Now, thankfully, uh, the way weaknesses work in this game, they kind of just bypass a lot of what makes things difficult. So, as you can see, he's just going to try repeatedly to use his ultimate, and we're just not going to let him. Zero is just going to say no and whack him with a rolled up newspaper, except instead of a rolled up newspaper, it's a drill. And now he's dead. Volt Catfish is dead, and it's a good thing he died. Because I hate him. Anyway, I don't know how I feel about this big cylinder. Because it can give you one-ups and, like, energy refills, and that's cool. I don't know if you always get a 1-up by slashing that thing with the Z-Saber. Uh, is that what I was trying to show off there? Either way, uh, slashing it with a Z-Saber just automatically destroys it, so... You can't get any other items from it. Anyway, Blizzard Buffalo. So, he was actually Ski Slope Security, which... You know what? Uh, if I were just a normal person and not a Reploid built for combat, I guess I probably would be terrified of Blizzard Buffalo, because I know for a fact that I can't do Zero's cool jumps. Uh, not even close. I, like, probably a quarter of what Zero can do at best. And absolutely, that that's before the double jump. So yeah, if Blizzard Buffalo starting, started charging towards me uh, with his very large body, even if I were to acknowledge 3D space, I don't think I could get out of the way in time to avoid his attack, so... You know what? He would have been pretty effective as security. He is, however, dead now, because he is fighting a combat Reploid. And Zero is just better than him. Okay, so I think I was showing off here that you get extra lives from this thing if you slash it with a Z-Saber. But honestly, I think everything else is kind of more useful. Though, extra lives can keep you, uh, going through the boss, I- the, the boss gauntlet, I guess. So even if you die, you don't necessarily, uh, lose out on your opportunity to get through this without having to restart it. Anyway, Gravity Big Beetle's whole thing is he's actually the older brother of Boomer Kawanger from the first game, which is neat. 
They don't look anything alike, but they are beetles. Now granted, you might not have known what a, what a Kuwanger is. But now you do. They are both beet boods. And yeah, basically, Gravity Beetle was just real mad that we killed his brother. Uh, so now we've killed him as well. I think it was Zero who fought both of them, so he just killed both brothers in this case. Okay, yeah, I was definitely showing off that, yeah, you can just grind for lives if you want to, but, oh, the energy probably would have been a better idea. I like that you can get weapon energy, but, like, since it is a random uh, drop from that cylinder, I don't... I don't know. I, I would have preferred they just gave you both uh, HP and weapon energy at the end of a fight. Just, you know, a set amount that would feel like enough instead of just test your luck with a tube. Anyway, Tunnel Rhino's not super interesting. Uh, he's just a miner, so there you go. <laughs> he did mining, uh, and then when he got corrupted by uh, the Maverick virus, he did more mining, but like bad mining. The kind that would just kind of collapse everything around it and kill hundreds of thousands of people. So it's a good thing we stopped him from doing that by killing him, and then we stopped him a second time by killing him again. Alright, so I think by this point, yeah, no, I was, I was done showing off that you get extra lives for slashing it. Because, honestly, I do kind of need, uh, Acid Splash for later. You can probably guess why. Anyway, speaking of Acid, here's Toxic Seahorse. So, apparently, he's like the most mysterious of the Mavericks, which is actually kind of neat. I, I do kind of like how they, uh, you know, didn't do that too many times, but they just said, Yeah, nobody really knows where Toxic Seahorse came from, but yeah, he can do a weird thing where he, like, melts his body into acid. That's just a thing he can do. He's a weird result of some kind of science that nobody's allowed to know about. You're killing very valuable secret data right here. There's a lab somewhere in the world who's just cursing Zero right now. <laughs> They're just lamenting all the battle data lost after we've killed Toxic Seahorse. A uh, second time. And Slash. Alright, so who do we have next? Well, we've only got two more. Oh, I must have saved my least favorite for last then. Okay, so Crushed Crawfish is a military reploid, so that's pretty straightforward. So you might be wondering, what's his deal? Uh, apparently, uh, Friendly Fire. He was just built with a design flaw of just, everybody is enemy. Are they in my army? Are they against me? I don't know, I'll just kill everyone. That was Crush Crawfish's whole deal, so technically speaking... Uh, okay, look, he was probably going up against other Reploids at the time, but he was basically already a Maverick. And then he just got decommissioned because, you know, he's just going around rampaging with those giant claws, killing people. So yeah, they just sealed him away, and then Doppler found him. And I don't even know if he had to do anything to make him quote-unquote go Maverick. I, I think that's just, hey... Have fun. You're back, you're awake, have fun. Alright, so yeah, like I said, least favorite for last, here's Neon Tiger. I hate this fight, but it's a little more bearable with his weakness, so... Not nearly as bad. He can't do his stupid low-ish HP attacks now. It sucks that I dislike his fight so much, because he was actually a poacher hunter. Which means, yes, he fought poachers, because, you know, there's not a lot of actual, like, natural life forms left over, you know? A lot of nature and animals is just robots now, so if you're a poacher in this era, you're kind of the worst type of person. So they just made a tiger robot with claws to kill them. Uh, but then, you know, Doppler found him, made him a maverick. It's really too bad. Could have gotten along well with Android 17. 
They would have been a pretty good team. Let me tell you, Doppler wouldn't have even been a problem if Android 17, Neon Tiger's best friend, was around. Alright, so there we go. I'm probably way past 9 lives by now. And that's all of the Mavericks taken care of. Which means, of course, after we get through a security hall, maybe two... It'll be time... For this guy. He leans over so he's very annoying. Now, of course, it's time for the boss. I've been waiting for you. Oh. Never mind, I was kind of expecting X. Uh, wh whatever. Anyway, good job killing my guys. Um. Look, look, look. I, you're really supposed to follow Sigma. You remember that thing that happened in the last game when Sigma said that? Yeah. <laughs> that should be true. You want to join me? Please say yes. You're very scary. My man, I'm absolutely not going to do that. Well, fuck. Oh, so you're going to fight the Red String of Fate, then? The what? It's a kind of, it's a metaphoric uh, artsy thing. Anyway, I'm going to kill you now. Here I go. Here I go. <laughs> Look, I didn't make this battle body, but it is a battle body. Alright, so Dr. Doppler, uh, he is a battle of patience. When he stands there posing like he's doing a Dragon Ball Z charge up, uh, don't attack him. Because as you saw before, he gains like this green barrier that heals him. Yeah, that right there. So if you attack him too frequently, uh, then he will just ke keep peeling off your damage, so attack him with acid. Uh, don't be too afraid if the animation for it plays uh, the healing attack, rather. Uh, you know, it, it just sort of plays because of the way the acid attack works. It sort of tricks him into thinking, oh, you must be attacking me now, uh, but you're not. So yeah, as long as you don't go in too hard and just attack him while he's attacking, uh, this isn't really too hard of a fight. It's not too fast. It's, uh... Very predictable. You can tell what he's doing. That's his most unpredictable attack, just because it comes out really quickly, but even then, it's really not bad. This one, however, is easy, because he just tries to fly at you at your level, and he does so very slowly. If you need any time to attack him, it's then. I'm very sad about this defeat. Well done, you're stronger than Sigma. <laughs> You're stronger than the perfect battle body I made. Sigma's true form is that of a computer virus, which I guess does kind of explain uh, the, the final boss of X2. Oh no, a horrific new body for him. <laughs> Where's the body located? Which is normally a question you ask when somebody's already dead. But no, we're not trying to find a corpse, we're trying to make one. <laughs> he hasn't occupied his body yet. Also, I do apologize but for being so giddy about the word battle body. I don't know what it is either, I, I just find it amusing. <laughs> just something about the words battle body is just funny to me. All right, so, I mean, we're, we're having Zero promise to take down Sigma, but, uh, as much as I like Zero, and as much as it's been fun to have him for the majority of this game, I think this is X's fight to, well, fight. Now, as we can see, there is already a body for Sigma in the background, but we're not turning around and shooting it because, well, A, there's more than one, and those are just the normal bodies. I'll go ahead and destroy the power generator. Sure, I... yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, I'd believe that. There's, there's just a, a generator over there. Alright, we'll just pull the plug and all of these Sigma bodies will die. It's kind of fucked up. Some might call it a Reploid rights violation, but, um... Nobody needs to know what we're doing here, other than X, Zero, and of course Sigma. Alright Sigma, what are you ripping off today? Captain America? Cool, cool. <laughs> Doppler fucking sucked. It would have succeeded if it wasn't for you meddling reploids. And your dog! And then Rush is just there for some reason. But it's the Ruby Spears Rush, so you really hate him. Okay, so Sigma. Sigma's actually really difficult. Thankfully, it's not too bad to hit him with his weakness. Uh, in fact, using his weakness actually puts you in a better position to avoid those fireball attacks, because the way he mixes them up makes it really hard to avoid them. And of course, uh, frontal attack is not very effective. You may have noticed the shield. But, um, oh god, I, I don't want to be there. It's a very repetitive fight, but, uh, it is one where you need to find your effective strategy, or he will keep doing this over and over again, and if you're not either doing this or figuring out how to weave through those fireballs, you're gonna be taking damage. Now, thankfully, even when he mixes up his attacks, uh, by throwing the shield, as long as you're doing this, it's fine. Like, this really is the perfect weakness against Sigma. Like, it doesn't just do the most damage against him. Oh, okay, that's actually a pretty effective mix-up, because that's just flying in the air in an impossible way. So you actually have to actively dodge there, or it will still hit you. But yeah, no. Using his weakness actively puts you out of harm's way for most of that fight, <laughs> making it go from really damn difficult to almost trivial. It is a lot of upkeep, though. You see, that wasn't my battle body. That was just my cosplay. This is the ultimate battle body. Well, that is pretty big. Okay, so say hello to Kaiser Sigma. Alright, so yeah, this is a pretty tough fight. First off, um, he does not have a lot of weak points. His weakest spot is his head. Now, thankfully, I'm actively using, uh, oh god, what was this, the, uh, Hyper Blaster or whatever? The thing I got from the, the Buster chip that is actually pretty dang useful. Look, dash, uh, upgrades are probably always going to be my favorite, but, like, this one's very effective here, because I'm just auto-charging that beam, which is making this fight a lot easier, because now I can just focus on dodging. Those missiles are fast, those bombs or whatever they are really move around a lot and that big beam he does doesn't actually like hit you into an iframe mode it will actually just constantly drain hp if you're in it he can also aim it either up or down so you kind of want to lead him uh, i would goad him into aiming down because personally i find it easier to jump around to avoid his attacks but you know Either way is fine, and unfortunately now I have to keep my finger on another button while I fight this guy. Oh good god, yet. Yeah. <laughs> I did not appreciate the extra distraction, but considering this is a no-hit run, I couldn't exactly get more Hyper Buster whatever it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it, and I'm kind of busy shooting a very small head on a very large body. Uh, thankfully, though, he is very slow. It's pretty easy to move, maneuver around him, so even though he's actively moving around, it's really not a huge issue to avoid him. Yep, we defeated your battle body yet again. Even with this magnificent body? Yep, only one choice. Give up. Oh, actually, no, that's a pretty smart idea, shit. Um... Are you sure you don't want to just, like, throw random enemies at me again? Okay, so, final segment. Uh, Virus Sigma's going to summon lava. And you're gonna want to just stay at the top. I wanted to make this kind of more dramatic and stay towards the middle, but eventually, he's gonna start moving around, and he's very confused if you're too high up. However, if you're not too high up, 
he kind of just homes in on you and there's nothing you can do about it, so I had to just sort of cheese this and always be at the top of the area, which is kind of boring IMO, but whatever. <laughs> Damn, it's a dead end! <laughs> I'm tiny now! Hey, Sigma, how's it going? You actually don't want X's body, um, he's got lice. You might be asking, where are the lice? I don't see any hair. And you know, that's a, a very good question, and you don't want to learn the answer to it. Oh! Alright, we showed this creep the real superpower of teamwork. <laughs> You're zero! God damn it, I forgot about you! Why is it you every time? How'd you like that, Sigma? Okay, so there's actually an anti-Sigma virus program uh, Doppler made. And he just sort of put it on his beam saber, and now he has killed Sigma forever. Good job, Zero. We've done it. Alright, and thanks to the efforts of Dr. Doppler making something to combat the Sigma virus, which I guess he would have done before he got possessed. You know, he was working to end the whole Maverick thing, and he knew Sigma's identity, so, you know, it makes sense. Also, just FYI, there are two different endings for this segment right here. We'll be taking a look at the other one later. Neither one is particularly more canon than the other, though. This is just the one I prefer. Uh, especially in this hack. Uh, this is the first game where we've really seen uh, X and Zero work as a team. <laughs> Again, thank you Justin3009 for this hack for making that possible. Otherwise, I absolutely would not have used Zero outside of showing Hey, Here's Zero in one of the levels. And of course, the intro stage. But yeah, no, I felt like that was a pretty fitting end. You know, X is backed into a corner, but then Zero comes to save the day. Because they're just good partners like that. Anyway, as always, it's the, the end of a Mega Man X game, so it's time to be very sad about the nature of Reploids and war. Oh, isn't it all so tragic? As X stares at the burning remnants of Doppler's lab, his body trembles from an unknown sorrow. It's called depression. The Reploid has depression. That's the difference between him and every other Reploid. That's why he doesn't go Maverick. He's too sad. He can only hope that one day he figures out what the fuck Dr. Light was going on about. Why did you create me? Unknown to X's destiny has already been decided, but we're being very vague about it. Even this part, to save mankind, he must battle Zero. We're gonna keep alluding to the fight we'll have against Zero eventually. <laughs> the one in X2 wasn't canon, and it wasn't that interesting anyway. Alright, and that's the end of X3, and one more time I'm going to thank the Zero Project hack by Justin3009 for making this game actually just bearable to me. X3 is absolutely my least favorite of the SNES X games, but this hack made it just a lot more enjoyable. I find a really well-made hack will just, you know, make me a lot more excited for a thing I might not normally be excited for. See the, uh, English translation of Fire Emblem Thrasia 776 that came out a while back by this point. I don't like that game that much, but you know what? I really like seeing the passion behind a good hack that is, you know, trying to improve a game or whatnot. Again, without being too rude to the original source material people did work on this. They didn't have a lot of time to work on this, admittedly, and that's probably one of its issues. But they still laid the groundwork. Uh, but yeah, I feel like this game has the opposite problem of X2, though. Uh, X2 had a lot of good identity. I thought a lot of its stages had a lot of personality and were interesting in terms of the aesthetics they brought in. 
But the levels were short and didn't really do much. They kind of squandered the cool backgrounds they had. X3 has longer levels, tougher enemies, so it lasts a bit longer. But I just don't think the stage identities are quite as strong. There are definitely a few cool ones here and there, like uh, Blizzard Buffalo stage is... Yeah, he's right there. Uh, absolutely fantastic, cool looking stage, great atmosphere. But yeah, not a lot of them have that exactly. I've already kind of forgotten what Gravity Beetle's whole deal was. Crush Crawfish was the one where you explode a boat's engine and then the, the boat turns sideways. That one is cool. Like, that is almost something I could have seen X2 doing. That is a cool, memorable thing about that stage that just... Not a lot of stages in this game have that. Also, the music. One of the other reasons I don't like this game is there are actually a few tracks in this game that are just out and out bad, which is a rarity in the Mega Man series in general. But yeah, Neon Tiger's song fucking sucked, and I think it's Tunnel Rhinos who isn't really any better. Uh, there are definitely some good ones, though. It's not an entirely bound, bad soundtrack. Uh, I didn't mention uh, Doppler Stage 1 song, uh, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, that That's a good one. So yeah, there were good ones. It's just... X3 is notable for having actually bad songs. Which is, uh, yeah, it, it, it puts it below even the X soundtracks that were just less memorable, or Mega Man soundtracks in general. Uh, I will say though, of course, uh, this game does look fantastic. Uh, even if I'm not really as fond of, of some of the, uh, tile sets, I think there are a few too many just labs. <laughs> uh, and again, they're not as interesting as X2, but like, in terms of actual quality of sprite work, it's all fantastic, but that shouldn't be a surprise. These games look real good. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy with uh, this hack, making Zero playable. You can tell I like this game more than Mega Man 10, because I was actually pretty happy to play this game twice. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, but you can switch between X and Zero. You shouldn't have needed to play the game twice to play both of them. Well... The game may be done, but next time on Mega Man X3, the bonus episode, we'll be seeing some alternate things I could have done throughout the game.